Hello everyone, this is the Pocket Passer. I'm your host, Randy White. I hope all of you are having a fantastic day. I know I am. It's Thursday morning as I'm shooting this, or Thursday early afternoon. The Jaguars Titans game is going to be kicking off here in several hours. I'm going to get to that game later, but right now it is my top 10 teams in the NFL that I'm giving you. And we're going to get right into this, starting off with number 10, the Baltimore Ravens. They're still a good team. There's a lot of questions about how Lamar Jackson is going to be when he comes back. And offensively, their productivity has declined greatly in the back half of the season. They got to get going on that. They need to figure that stuff out. But a healthy Lamar Jackson will obviously revitalize this offense. They're nine and four right, or excuse me, they're nine and five right now. They hold the fifth seed in the AFC playoff picture. Their defense has improved drastically. Their defense is playing at a high level right now, and they just need to put all the pieces together when everyone gets healthy. Still fighting for that division lead in the AFC North when Lamar comes back. If they can beat the Bengals, they can take back the North, only one game back on Cincinnati, and they beat them earlier in the year. So that'll be very interesting to see how that unfolds. But right now, they are a good team. They've fallen off a lot, though, the last several weeks, so I have to put them at 10 instead of any higher. Number nine. The Los Angeles Chargers. They have been red hot as of recently. Uh, really impressive win against the Titans they just had. Justin Herbert is making great plays. He's been clutched the last several weeks. They've lost narrowly to the Chiefs twice now, and that's really the difference maker in where they are in their season. If they get one of those games, they're 9-5 and five right now, and the Chiefs, or one game ahead in the division, said the Chiefs have their division under wraps. And the Chargers have a 93% chance to make the playoffs right now. Eight and six. They are the sixth seed, and they're looking good. If they want to keep rolling, they got their future under their own control. Just win out and they're in, or just win a good amount of games. The defense is playing at a higher level than they have been. And if the offense and defense can put everything together, they're going to be tough to stop. Brandon Staley, I don't love him as a coach, to be honest with you. He's made some very stupid decisions the last two seasons. I loved what he did to change the culture last year, but I feel like he goes a little bit too far. I think he's a little too overly aggressive. Overall, I like the team, though. If they can just stay healthy, if they can get guys back healthy and keep the guys that are playing well, keep them healthy, they're going to keep winning games. They just got to make sure that happens. I know that's a difficult thing for the Chargers to do. They don't like to stay healthy. Number eight, Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins have lost three straight after being eight and three. They're playing poor football, but they're still a very good team. Their defense has been subpar, but they have the most dangerous offense possibly in the NFL. They have a limited quarterback, but he's very good at what he does. I've talked about that in previous videos. He's limited, but he's exceptional at what he does, at what he does which is getting to the back of his drop, getting the ball on rhythm to his receivers in holes in the zone and letting them make plays in the open field. Very few people are better at that than Tua Tagovailoa is. And they have the weapons to do it. Jalen Waddell and Tyreek Hill, two of the fastest guys in the NFL, makes the most dangerous receiving core in the league. Tyreek Hill is second in the league in receiving yards. Jalen Waddell is having a great season himself. And Tua is playing really good football aside from the game against the 49ers that was very, very bad. The Dolphins right now in the playoff picture, but they got to keep winning to make sure they stay there. Number seven, the Minnesota Vikings. Okay, they just lost to the Lions. The Lions, though, are honestly, they're, they're a playoff team right now. They're, they're seven and seven. They started off one and six, and they have gone six and one since that one and six start. And at that point aside, Minnesota is still a very good football team. They played horribly in the first half versus Indianapolis. 33 nothing deficit, but they put together a fantastic second half, outscoring the Colts 36 to three in regulation in the third and fourth quarter, and then dropping in that field goal in overtime to win at 39-36. That is one of the most wild games I have not watched. I need to like go on, I don't know, I need to find a way to watch that game because I feel like that's a game that's just too good to miss. I've seen the highlights and I've listened to Paul Allen's commentary absolutely dumping on the Colts punter for almost no good reason. I know he's probably mad because they were losing 33-0 at one point. But that was 
an unbelievable game. The Vikings are a really good team, but I'm dropping them in the ranking from where they probably were in my head and where a lot of people had them. Vikings at seven. They got all the pieces. The offensive weapons are fantastic. The defense has played horrifically the last several weeks. They put together three quarters of good football in the second quarter, the fourth quarter, and then the overtime. So if they can keep that moving and they can play like they did there, then they're in a good spot. But they played a horrible offense, so I'm not really overly impressed with their performance. The point is, is they need to play a lot better if they want to be playoff contenders because right now my gut tells me the Vikings are a first or second round exit. They might get lucky and play someone bad in the first round, but if they keep losing, they're not going to have the second seed. And if they don't have the second seed, they're not going to have the liberty of playing a bad team. Interestingly enough, if the Vikings get the seventh seed, it's very possible they play a team like the Lions or the Packers. And if they play the Packers, that would mean the Packers beat them, which means they'd have to play a team that just beat them the last time they played them. If they played the Lions, that means the Lions won out and everything went right, and the Lions beat them the last time they played. So very interesting dynamic for whoever Minnesota plays in the round of the playoffs if they get the second seed. They are 11-3, and three, so they are the second seed right now, and if they take care of business, they will have the second seed. So very interesting to see how that all unfolds. Number six, Dallas Cowboys. I just don't trust them. Similarly to the Vikings, they're a first or second round exit. I just don't see the Cowboys putting together if they don't get the first seed, which they're not going to get the first seed. It's not happening if they don't get that to happen, especially if Gardner Minshew puts on a show this week and the Eagles beat the Cowboys without Jalen Hurts, which would hurt Jalen Hurts' MVP argument. It would probably hand the MVP over to Patrick Mahomes. Hurts is my front runner for MVP right now, but he is likely going to miss the rest of the season and Mahomes is going to take that MVP award. So unfortunate how that unfolded, but we will see Jalen Hurts again in the playoffs hopefully fresh and ready to go. With that being said, the Dallas Cowboys need to get a win this weekend. And if they can get a win this weekend and keep pace one game behind the Vikings, they beat the Vikings. So they have a very good chance of getting the two seed if that were to be the case. However, if they lose despite that, the Eagles lock up the one seed. They lock up the first round bye. That is absolutely the best case scenario for the Eagles. So the Cowboys need to prevent that from happening. But I just, if they don't get the first seed, which they're almost definitely not going to, I don't see them putting together three straight games to get to the Super Bowl and then a game in the Super Bowl against another good team. May it be the Bills, the Chiefs, the Bengals, or if the Chargers get red hot at the right time, or any of these teams in the AFC that I feel like can beat the Cowboys at any moment. The Dolphins in a dome in nice weather for the Super Bowl. And whether it's a dome or it's outside, it's going to be nice weather for the Super Bowl. So their offense is going to be comfortable. The Ravens, if they somehow get there, I don't, I don't think the Ravens, I, the Ravens are another team I don't trust to make that stretch. But if they make it happen, that's a team the Cowboys could be. And honestly, the Ravens are the only team I like that I trust the Cowboys against just because I don't trust the Ravens either. But I don't trust the Cowboys to go and play good teams and beat good teams one game and then again and then again. And they're going to have to go on the road at some point, very likely, in those big games, possibly in the divisional round. But if not the divisional round, the NFC Championship likely on the road. And I don't trust the Cowboys to get that done. But they are still a very good team with a fantastic defense. Micah Parsons is a dog. That entire defense is playing at an elite level. I just don't trust the offense. They don't make enough plays at the right moment. They blew a lead against the Jaguars, and part of that falls on the defense. I'm fully aware of that, but a lot has to be better about the Cowboys for me to trust them going forward. Lack of discipline just all around, and they need to be better. They play, And Dak Prescott has played poorly in huge games. They need to just lock it in and string together big games for me to be able to trust them, and they haven't done it yet. Number five, the Buffalo Bills. Kind of similar to the Cowboys. I trust their quarterback a lot more. We saw what he's capable of in playoff games. He put together quite possibly the greatest stretch of two games in the playoffs in NFL history, and they lost anyway because they couldn't stop the Chiefs either. Didn't get stopped one time against the Bills. They went two straight games without punting against the Patriots, which is unbelievable. Josh Allen in the playoffs, when he locks in and he plays his best football, is the best player in the NFL. The question is, can he get to his 
top level again. He hasn't been there in a little bit. He's been turning the ball over a lot. He's been inconsistent. It's been a lot of Magic Mountain. I know Nick Wright likes to describe him as that. A lot of Magic Mountain gameplay. You don't know what you're getting from Josh Allen week in and week out. And that's really why the Bills aren't higher on this list. They've dropped because they've lost some games and they've been eh, And they're very good and their defense has played exceptionally. And their offense has played exceptionally. And they're high flying and they put up all these points and they get the ball and they take it away. And they make plays defensively. But Von Miller is out for the season. They lost him. That's a huge, huge loss when they picked him up to improve their pass rush to hopefully push for a Super Bowl. With that being said, their entire defensive line, their entire defensive front has played better this year. Matt Milano is playing elite football. Edmonds is playing elite football. The entire defense is playing elite football. The run, the run defense has improved drastically. They brought in guys in the interior D-line to fill those positions nicely. They just need to be consistent all the way around, and that's one thing the Bills have not been this season. They have not been consistent. They go on these moments where they almost go scorched earth and they get red hot and they just torch people. And then they pull back a little bit and they slow down a little bit. Let's see how they play against elite opponents as the season closes out. They got a big win against Miami that week this weekend. That was very helpful and that gives me a little more confidence in them. But it's, And if they can get the first seed, if they can hold on to the first seed that they have right now, that could be huge. Getting teams to have to play in Buffalo will be a big deal. It won't be as big of a deal for Kansas City because they're used to crappy weather themselves. But if they have to host a team like Miami or teams that aren't used to as bad a weather, that'll prove huge for them. Bills at five. Number four, Kansas City Chiefs. I know they lost to the Bills earlier in the year, but they're playing exceptional football right now. With the exception, of course, of the game they just played against the Texans. Good God, what was that? But they're playing good football aside from that game. I know they really sold The Texans had them right where they wanted them, fumbled it. Chiefs kick a field goal in overtime and end it 27-24. to 24. But other than that game, the Chiefs are playing high-level football right now. They're the number one scoring offense in the league. They're playing unbelievable on both sides of the ball. Their defense is playing well. Their offense is playing exceptionally good. Andy Reid is still the mind to be as far as offense goes in the NFL. There's no one like him offensive-mindedly. Travis Kelsey is putting together an incredible season, just an all-around elite season, although he's had a couple games where he hasn't done much recently, and it may or may not have cost me in the uh, fantasy playoff. We're not going to talk about that. Um, we're not going to talk about fantasy football because it – ruin my week but other than that Chiefs are playing excellent football and they're on a roll with the exception of that Texans game so if they can just get back to what they're doing before the Texans game then we should be good Chiefs are very very good though and I really like where they're at their offense is gelling Juju Smith-Schuster is playing better as he's getting more accustomed to the offense Patrick Mahomes is playing an elite level he's leading the league in every pa in every passing category and I just don't see him slowing down. Because of Jalen Hurts' absence, he's likely going to take MVP as well. Really like what I'm seeing from the Chiefs. They're the fourth best team in the NFL right now. Number three, a team that is truly red hot. The Cincinnati Bengals are on fire right now. They just can't seem to be stopped. I don't they're putting everything together so beautifully. Their defense is playing elite football. They beat the Chiefs by three. They have fantastic wins down 17 nothing versus Tampa they kick a field goal in the second to end the second half to go 17-3 and then the third quarter just belonged to them takeaway after takeaway after takeaway the pass rush got after Brady the run defense was there fumbles were happening a miscue on special teams and like that the Bengals had the lead and they held on to that lead with a dominant victory in the second half over Tampa Bay and they are just playing exceptional complimentary football. The defense, when it needs to make plays, they're making plays. When the offense needs to kick it into gear, they're kicking into gear. Jamar Chase has been exceptional. Joe Burrow has been exceptional. Everyone in the offense is just playing at an elite level. The running game has been a much bigger factor in the second half, which was something they needed to do. The offensive line is playing better. The defense 
Same thing they did last year that got them to the Super Bowl. The defense is playing complimentary football. Everyone's flying around, making tackles, making plays, playing well in coverage when they need to. It's just been really impressive to watch this Bengals team go from 0-2 to 10-2 and in their last 12 games. They've been dominant, and I've just been beyond impressed with how they've been able to play football. A narrow loss to Baltimore is really their only blemish on their schedule. And Joe Burrow, when he's not playing the Steelers, is the best quarterback in football this year. Unfortunately, his stats against the Steelers have really plummeted his uh, statistics versus everyone else, thanks to the four interceptions in week one, and then I believe two more in week two, uh, some of which thanks to T.J. Watt being just incredible. I don't know how T.J. Watt does what T.J. Watt does, but he is almost good enough to single-handedly put the Steelers in the top 10 if their offense could score points more than three times a game. So Bengals are exceptional. They're number three, and they're another team that I trust, obviously, to make the Super Bowl. I trust them to win games, big games in a row because they have a very similar roster to what they had last year, and they did it last year. They beat good teams, and they did it in a row. They beat the, they beat the Raiders, they beat the Titans, and then they got their huge overtime win against the Chiefs last year. Despite the Chiefs getting the ball first, something the Bills couldn't do when the Chiefs got the ball first against them, the Chiefs went down and scored. The Bengals got it done. They're at three, and it's kind of funny. I have the seeds inverted. So the one seed is five, the two seed is four, is four, and the three seed is three. I have it almost reversed. I feel like the best team in the AFC is really the third seed, and the third best team in the AFC is the one seed. So kind of funny how that worked out, but that's the way I feel about these teams right now. Number two, the San Francisco 49ers. I said the Bengals were the hottest team in football. I forgot. It's the 49ers, and there's no question about it. What they did to Tampa, what they've done week in and week out to teams, what they did stymieing the Dolphins' offense, completely shutting it down. They have the best defensive personnel in the league right now. They're playing at an unbelievable level. They have allowed next to no points in the second half over the vast majority of this season. It's You'll be hard-pressed to find me a better defense. I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can find a better defense than the way the 49ers are playing right now. Exceptional football. They play hard-nosed physical football, and teams that play the 49ers are 1-11 and the following week. What does that tell you about the 49ers? It tells you they beat you up. They crush you. And whoever has to play them in the playoffs is almost definitely not winning the Super Bowl because if you have to play them and then turn around the next week and play another good team in the playoffs, feeling the way you feel after you play a team as physical as them. And the NFL has always been a physical tough game it's less physical now than it was in the 70s and it's less demand because just simply because of the flags and that'll get called on you for unnecessary roughness but the 49ers bring an old-fashioned brand of football to the television that you don't get to see very often and they hit you hard fast and often and it's just really really tough to recover from those types of games so, I mean, they're the number two team right now, and you could I almost put them at number one. I had them at number one, and I just, you know, I can't, I can't not put the team that's at number one right now at number one with how they've been playing. But the 49ers are unbelievable. We thought the NFC would be weak, but that roster right now is just unbelievable. And if Brock Purdy keeps playing the way Brock Purdy is playing, the 49ers will win the NFC as long as they can stay healthy when Debo comes back because it's not a major injury. Debo will be back in the playoffs. Christian McCaffrey is exceptional. I thought that trade was a joke. I was a freaking moron because that trade has been perfect. He has opened up their offense an unbelievable amount. George Kittle getting healthy and getting used in the passing game now. He's been exceptional. Brandon Ayuk playing well. Everything is just gelling perfectly. The offense is playing an elite level and the defense is playing an elite level at the exact right time. The 49ers are getting red hot exactly when you want to get red hot if you want to win a Super Bowl. 49ers might be my Super Bowl favorite right now, but right now I have them at number two. Number one team in the NFL. You guys all knew it was coming, especially once we got into the top five and the teams like the Bills, the Chiefs, and the Bengals weren't one. I'm sure you guys had the idea that th these guys would be number one. The Philadelphia Eagles are exceptional obviously obviously the best record in the nfl one blemish away from having a chance of being undefeated they likely won't go undefeated now because jalen hurts is sitting out the rest of the regular season with his injury 
They're going to try and get him back for the playoffs all fresh. He will be back for the playoffs. And honestly, I think if they felt like this game was more important, he would play this week. But instead, he's not going to. He's going to kill my hopes and dreams of winning a fantasy championship this year. I already lost in both of my 11 win, both of my 11 win leagues. I lost in the first round, despite being the one seed in both those leagues. So that was heartbreaking. Um, and now is the three seed or whatever I am. I'm going to lose because Jalen Hurts is my quarterback. So sweet. Thank you, Philadelphia. But anyway, they have just played unbelievable football. And when I talk about complimentary football, like what the Bengals are playing, the 49ers are playing, the Chiefs are playing, and the Bills, when they win, they play it. Uh, the Eagles are the definition of that. They have the best record in the NFL. They're rolling through everybody. They're running away with this division. They lock up the one seed with a win this week, although Gardner Minshew will be starting. I like Gardner Minshew. I've talked about Gardner Minshew for a long, long time. If you guys paid attention to any of the I Form Nation podcasts, I talked about Gardner Minshew on there. I like him a lot. I'm excited to see him play this weekend. If they can get a win against the Cowboys and lock up the one seed without Gardner Minshew, one that's damning to Dallas, and they certainly won't be six anymore. And two, you got to feel good if you're an Eagles fan. Jalen Hurts will lose the MVP because of what's happening. Patrick Mahomes is going to end up running away with it now. I feel like Jalen Hurts was the favorite, but Mahomes is going to run away with it now for sure. But you got to feel good for your team. The Eagles right now, if not the best team in the NFL, the second best team in the NFL, I have them at one. I think them and the 49ers are the two best teams. Really what it's going to come down to is who plays better. Uh, obviously, that's what it always comes down to. But who just gets the ball to go the right way, maybe gets a few calls, gets the ball to bounce it the right way, gets a few calls to go their way. This is shaping up to be an incredibly competitive football season, despite how a lot of people felt going into the year with all the stars moving around to certain teams and we thought we were going to have super teams. That was not the case at all. And this has been an incredibly competitive season because of it. It's been an exciting season to watch. And watch out for really any of the teams I put in the top 10. Because just about any of them, I don't believe in the Cowboys, I don't believe in the Vikings, and I don't believe in the Ravens. But other than that, depending on when, where they get to play their playoff games, eight out of these 10 teams, I think are very capable of stringing together big wins in a row. So this is a really, really fun season. We're going to overview my top 10 teams real quick. 10 Ravens, 9 Chargers, 8 Dolphins, 7 Vikings, 6 Cowboys, 5 Bills, 4 Chiefs, 3 Bengals, 2 49ers, and 1 Eagles. There you go. Those are my top 10 teams in the NFL so far this season. I'm going to try and get another video like this out to you guys next week. And that's all I have for you guys. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, if you want to see more videos like it, if you want me to keep pumping out this content, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on TikTok at The Pocket Passer as well. I've been very active the last several days on both of those accounts. Make sure to hit that bell icon if you don't want to miss when I upload YouTube videos like this one right here. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see all of you in the next episode.